we've been learning a lot about vectors and vector spaces and their properties. And along the way, we've thought about our vectors as just being points inside of an n-dimensional Euclidean space. But as Shakespeare once said, there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Vectors are so much more than just points or arrows inside of an n-dimensional space. They can be a lot of different things. One of the reasons for studying vector spaces the way that we do is so that we can see that kind of algebraic structure in other places and use linear algebra to study other kinds of objects. So in this video, we want to get a short introduction to in what sense can we consider other types of things to be vectors. We're going to look at polynomials as an example. In what sense are polynomials vectors? We'll also take a look at matrices. In what sense are matrices vectors? And the bottom line story is, wherever there is addition and scalar multiplication suitably defined, you will find a vector space, something that we can do linear algebra with. So what does that look like? So first of all, if we want to think about other kinds of vectors and what might actually be there, let's take a look at an example of two polynomials, f and g. Right? Uh, let's say that they're both quadratic, so they have degree at most equal to 2. Well, what should be an appropriate addition operation for my polynomials? Well, it should probably be the thing that we would want it to be. We can add two polynomial expressions together, polynomial functions, if you like, just by adding them pointwise. Right? Add those two expressions, combine the like terms. We can show that that kind of addition satisfies all of the axioms that we would need an addition operation in a vector space to satisfy. Same thing for scalar multiplication. If I want to multiply one of my polynomials by 2, for example, I should just be able to distribute that too and simplify out the sort of obvious thing. We can show that that scalar multiplication operation also satisfies the axioms that would be needed for a scalar multiplication operation in a vector space. And it also interacts with the addition operation in the way that we would need it to. And so the bottom line of that is that if I look at the set made of all of the polynomials that have degree at most 2, we're going to call that set P2, that set gets to be a vector space, even though we don't usually think of the objects inside of it as being vectors. Usually we think of them as being, oh, they're functions I can do calculus with. But if what we care about about those functions has to do with how they are added together or how they are multiplied by scalars, we can and should and do think of those polynomials as a vector space. Notice we have to put a limit on the degree here um, because, well, I guess we don't have to. We could have infinitely many different degrees of polynomial all in the same bucket because anytime I add two polynomials, the result is a polynomial. Anytime I multiply a polynomial by a scalar, the result is still a polynomial. But that vector space would be infinite dimensional, and we don't have the tool work this semester to study infinite dimensional vector spaces. So polynomials can be considered to be vectors, so we can do linear algebra to answer questions about how polynomials add and subtract and multiply by scalars with one another. And our second example is going to be to think of matrices as though they are vectors. So what might that look like? Well, let's suppose that I have a matrix of some sort. Let's say it's the matrix that has entries negative 6, 4, 3, 5. Um, and I have another matrix. What should it mean to add those two matrices together? Well, it should probably mean the obvious thing, right? We add the first row, first column element to the first row, first column element, and so on. So we add these two matrices component-wise. That defines an addition on the set of matrices that satisfies all of the properties we would need an addition operation in a vector space to satisfy. Similar story for scalar multiplication. If I want to multiply a matrix by a scalar like 3, we should probably do the obvious thing, where I multiply that 3 by each of the entries in my matrix and then simplify. That defines for us a scalar multiplication operation that satisfies everything we would need a scalar multiplication in a vector space to satisfy. And so the end of this story is that as long as all of my matrices have the same dimension as one another, then that set of matrices equipped with this kind of addition and that kind of scalar multiplication operation gets to be a vector space. And we'll give that vector space a name like M22, M22 here being the set of matrices that have two rows and two columns. So here are two examples of places that we can use linear algebra where we're not necessarily just thinking about the vectors as vectors. They have some other contextual meaning to them, that maybe my vectors are actually polynomials, or maybe my vectors are actually matrices. Um, but when it comes down to it, we can do linear algebra with them in all of the same ways that we do linear algebra, just with points inside of an n-dimensional space. So in the next video, we're going to look at that question. How do I take the context that we see in these kinds of examples and strip the context away 
so that we can get down to doing the kind of familiar linear algebra that we've been building up to doing this semester.